Welcome to our online service for this 11th Sunday after Trinity. Today's service and others in August are slightly different. Instead of our reflection on the Gospel passage, we will hear from someone from our congregations tell us a story from their journey of faith. And this week we will hear from Maureen Anderson. Our Gospel passage from John's Gospel tells us more about bread, that Jesus is the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, he says. When we know that God is real, and that Jesus really is the Holy One of God, what else can we do but make the sensible, wise choice and commit ourselves to follow in him, just like Maureen did? That's the wisest, most important choice we make in the whole of our life. So as we gather, welcome in the name of Christ, God's grace, mercy and peace be with you all. And we pray together. God of our days and years, we set this time apart for you. Form us in the likeness of Christ, so that our lives may glorify you. Amen. One day we will rejoice with our God in our eternal home. But today also we can join together to rejoice. The Lord is King. <laughs> sing and triumph evermore. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again I say rejoice. Jesus the Saviour reigns, the God of truth stains he took his seat above lift up your heart lift up your voice rejoice again i say Lift up your heart, lift up your voice. 
servants up to their eternal home. We soon shall hear the archangel's voice, God's trumpet call shall sound. come now to say sorry for the things we have done wrong or failed to do. Lord God, our Maker and our Redeemer, this is your world and we are your people. Come among us and save us. Lord, when we fail to trust you in all things, forgive us and help us to trust you more. When we complain that you have forsaken us, you have left us abandoned us. Forgive us and help us to trust you more. We choose to go our own way because your way doesn't seem to make sense. Forgive us and help us to trust you more. When we don't challenge injustice and instead accept things as they are, forgive us and help us to trust you more. When we keep asking for more signs, more proof, more of everything, forgive us and help us to trust you more. When we trust a little, then snatch it back, forgive us and help us to trust you more. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive you your sins and make you holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We now hear our Gospel reading for today, coming from the Gospel of John and read by Peter. After a moment of quiet, we'll hear Maureen's story from her journey of faith. And this will be followed by music from Frida and Cathy. A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 6, beginning at verse 51. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, I'm Maureen. At the end of August, I will be celebrating 50 years of living and worshipping in Spaxton. As I look back, not only over these last 50 years, but over the whole of my life, I can see God's presence running through, as it were, each chapter of my life in my story of following Jesus, and he is walking, and his walking with me. One of my favourite stories in the Bible is from the book of Ruth, where she and her mother-in-law, Naomi, have arrived in Bethlehem 
the ancestral home of Naomi, but totally unknown to Ruth. Ruth had chosen to leave her own country and travel back with and care for her vulnerable mother-in-law. So on arrival, she had to find accommodation and food for them both. And the story goes, one day, Ruth the Moabites said to Naomi, let me go out into the harvest fields to pick up the grain left behind by the harvesters. She did this, and the story goes on. As it happened, she found herself working in a field belonging to Boaz, the relative of her late father-in-law. And then if you read on in the book of Ruth on cha in chapter 2, it proves to be the best news ever for Ruth and Naomi. And it's those three words, as it happened, that have continually come up as I look back on my story. The first time I recognised that that was what God was doing in my life was after Alan, my husband, died. I was tired and sad and lonely, finding life difficult. But often at my lowest ebb, someone would call or phone or I'd be encouraged in my readings. It occurred so often that I would look out for such occurrences, and I still do so nine years on. But as I look back on my story of faith, I can see God has been doing that all along. I grew up in a family where we went to church every week, Anglican. I loved Sunday school, and in my teens was confirmed taught in Sunday school, prayed when I went to bed. But as a family, we didn't talk much about God. I guess I and the rest of them took him for granted. When I was disobedient and got into trouble, I was more worried about what my parents, particularly my mother, would say, rather than what God would feel. I did have a loving and secure family life. But then I left home for teacher training college in Cambridge, a long way from Bristol, and I only came home at the ends of term. It was a scary time, but there was an Anglican church opposite college, so I started going there on Sundays. Then one week, a fellow first-year student got chatting and she invited me to go to the University Christian Union to which her brother went. So I went along, found folk friendly, a bit more religious than I was used to, but over the weeks I made friends. One friend was a lad, a medical student, and whom I really liked, and he invited me out for coffee which was great, until he asked such an embarrassing question. How long have you known the Lord Jesus as your personal saviour? Well, I didn't know what to say. I must have stumbled some reply like, oh, I've known God all my life. Anyway, when I got back to college, I was upset. So I wrote down what I was thinking, how I felt, that my religion was a very private thing to me, etc., etc. But, as it happened, that question was just the start of God drawing me to himself. In the following five years, my life changed so much. Times of joy, new relationships, fulfilment, heartache, wrong decisions made, hurt inflicted. Through it all, I continued to go to church, but most of the time feeling a hypocrite. Then, as it happened, I met and married Alan, who came from a very evangelical family of Baptists, 
who talked all the time about Jesus. They accepted me just as I was and loved me. The next year, Alan got a job in Australia, even further away from family support and security. First, we went to Canberra, having to stay in a basic hotel with other families who were also waiting for the promised government houses to be finished. Once again, I saw God at work because I made friends with other young mums, one of whom went to the local church, and she took me along to coffee mornings and as a family to church in their car three or four miles away. But then nine months later, we moved to Sydney, where at first I was very lonely. Alan worked in the city, away from home from seven in the morning till seven at night. No young families around. We didn't drive, but we walked to our nearest church on Sundays. And as it happened, one week coming home, a car stopped. A woman called out saying that she'd noticed us before walking to and fro and wondered if she could help with transport at any time. And that was the beginning of a new chapter in my story. Alan got involved in the choir and youth work. My new friend took me to young mums groups where once again there was a relaxed chat about Jesus, so much so that I was longing to know what made them so willing to share their thoughts and feelings and ups and downs and ask Jesus for help in praying with one another. It was then that a penny dropped. I remembered that question. Did I know Jesus personally? Did I have a living relationship with God? So one morning, I did. I did pray, asking God to forgive me for running away from him, ignoring the unhappiness I caused to others. And would he accept me into his family? I believe he did because for the first time in many years, I experienced peace in my heart. And he gave me the verses from John 10, 27 to 30, in which Jesus says that no one who follows him will perish. No one can snatch them out of his hand. Well, during the following seven years that we spent in Australia, I learnt so much about the love and faithfulness of our God seen in Jesus. But then my father died and we decided to return to England before other grandparents died and our children would never know them. Thus began another chapter in my story, which we'll have to wait for another time. But in all of this, I want to thank God for his love and faithfulness and abiding presence. Psalm 139 is a constant source of comfort and challenge to me. To God be the glory, great things he has done.
We come now to make our statement of faith together. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We come now to share the peace. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We come now to our prayers, which will be led by Mel. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Lord, please settle our hearts and minds as we listen to the whisper of the Holy Spirit guiding us to all truth. Help us in our faith journey to discard our old ways as we walk to the light that is Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our friends and family and for those we care about. We thank you, Lord, for giving us this community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who need God's help and loving touch today, we pray that they may feel your presence. Please prompt us through actions and prayers to support and be alongside those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for compassion and understanding when interacting with those we disagree with or don't understand. Lord, where there is conflict, we pray for peace and reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We think of the people and animals in places where there are natural disasters and extreme weather. We pray for all who are affected by this. Lord, please guide us in ways to protect this planet and all who live in it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our country Please guide and sustain all in positions of authority. Guide them in ways of justice for all they serve. The sick, the homeless, the young, the wor working and the retired all have a place in our national community. Help us also to play our part to promote a loving, caring society. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all experiencing anxiety, we pray for peace. For all in despair, we pray for hope. For all in pain, we pray for healing. For all who mourn, we pray for comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings of this day. Help us to share our faith through our actions and words. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the special prayer for today. God of glory, the end of our searching. 
Help us to lay aside all that prevents us from seeking your kingdom and to give all that we have to gain the pearl beyond price, all price, through our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we join all our thoughts and prayers together in the words Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Our closing song holds out a vision of our eventual and eternal home. There is a higher throne. <laughs> As our worship draws to its close, we pray together. God of power, may the boldness of your spirit transform us. May the gentleness of your spirit lead us. May the gifts of your spirit equip us to serve and worship you now and always. And may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. 
and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you and all those you love and care for. Amen. So let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>